Hey. What's happening? What's up, my brother? Peace, peace. How you feeling? I'm amazing, man. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's been years, like you said, man, but it's, it's, it's amazing to see you, bro. And it's amazing just to see you continuing to growth, continuing the service path, you know, shedding light on people in our community, especially who are doing the work that's relevant to what you're doing. It's amazing, bro. Grateful to be here. Man. I'm grateful to have you, man. It's it's truly my pleasure. And I think the last time we we met was but like was the event in Keller Wood. Yeah, yeah, we did an event, um, a real estate and and credit event, and then we did the one at the school also when we were um teaching the kids at the school. Yeah, Kip, Kip. I man, I I miss the days of the in person networking, man. So, so for those that may not be familiar with your background, talking about what you've been up to, can you just kind of share a little bit of overview of who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, well, my name is Mamadou Kunta Mambere. I was born and raised in the Gambia, West Africa, um, born of the Mandingo tribe, uh, moved to the United States with my family at a young age, at about eight, nine years old, um, to Washington, D.C., and then, you know, since then, went to high school in Washington, D.C., was an athlete, uh, went to college at North Carolina a and State University, uh, graduated school, decided to go into finance um, at the time with the goal to get into international finance and start working at the World Bank and quickly realized that, you know, if I wanted to live life basically on my terms with freedom, I would have to find something I was passionate about and go into business. Um, so then um, me and two partners of mine at the time, we decided to go into credit service because I was already in real estate. I worked in, I worked through the banks. I worked through Wells Fargo Financial, um, also worked with Merrill Lynch. And eventually I just realized that I was making more impact helping individual people figure out their financial situation, mm -hmm. credit in particular, because, you know, we all graduated school, a lot of us with bad credit, um, not necessarily because folks were irresponsible all the time. We just didn't have the information to learn how to use credit to leverage your finances and how to build a foundation for yourself, personal and business using credit. Um, so then, you know, I started uh, my credit company with those two partners. God bless their soul. They both actually passed through the years. Um, so, you know, I had to kind of go through rebranding and just build from there. And since then, we've, you know, serviced probably close to 50,000 people nationwide. Um, at any given time, we have about four to 5,000 active clients. And we mainly teach people how to build their personal credit, but then to create a foundation around a business, right? Now, I'm, I'm one who's always been in favor of do what you're good at, do what you're passionate about. If you have a career that aligns with where you feel your need to serve, that's amazing. But ultimately, be clear about what your goals are in life instead of kind of just letting the years pass and then find out some later date that you actually, you know, you don't want to be trapped in some job. You don't want someone else to control your income and you want to be able to travel and do all these other things. So I started to rear the focus on teaching people that regardless of what industry you're in, it's a major benefit to learning how to build a business credit foundation around what you're doing. And then from there, work backwards and just work your way up. The years are going to pass anyway. So you might as well, you know, try to develop the courage to one, find what you love, find what you would do for free, mm -hmm. build a foundation around it, find where you can serve, meaning find where people have issues that you can solve and problems that you can solve with your natural talent, and then just build from there. That way, it never feels like work. That way, you get to control your income based on your level of passion for whatever you're doing, and then build from there. And, you know, I've, I've seen an explosion of that throughout our whole community with a lot of people doing great work. But that's, that's mainly what my forte is in. Um, so, you know, now we work more with a lot of holistic healing sciences um, to where we work specifically with plant medicines, ancestral plant medicine, to help people really dive into uh, the information that's in this special melanated DNA here and beyond and, and undo a lot of childhood trauma, addiction issues. Um, so even though, you know, we have credit on one side and finances on another side and then holistic health on the other side, it all still comes down to wellness. It all still comes down to information and, and learning that you can do all of these things and not have to put yourself in a box. Man, literally and figures. About that. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Wow, man.
there's, there's so much to unpack, you know, <laughs> with your life and your overview. Yeah. But I, like I said, I, I'm just grateful to be able to exchange vibrations right now because um, you, you not only lived the life of not knowing what to do, but you've actually helped other people figure out what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You said, you know, 50,000 people, that's nothing to sneeze at, man. Yeah, and you know, it's not, it's interesting because when we started doing the credit thing, like, I believe that you can create a successful business around many different things. My personal philosophy has always been service. Um, not only because it comes purely from the heart, but the way we grew the credit business, just like we partnered with your organization before and we did a real estate event and we did another one helping at the school, we would go to all the places where they needed it and literally mm -hmm. teach credit for free. So I went to libraries, churches, organizations, um, different, different sorority and fraternity organizations, different real estate companies, and we would just teach personal and business credit. And then naturally the people who needed the service joined us and we were able to help tons of real estate agents themselves grow their businesses because tons of them have clients who just aren't educated on credit. So particularly when I saw that, man, all the homies from college, when we graduated, everyone had goals and dreams, but literally no one knew the fundamentals of building credit. And information is powerful, right? It changes your situation. So when we focus on educating people in that, to see people turn around, buy houses, buy cars, you know, save a lot of money on debt, it transforms your life, you know, in a major way. So, and, and I think that's a shared thing to where you grow with your community and you get to see other people grow. And for me, that's what gives me the, the fulfillment that, that I need. I'm just a lover of people and love to see people strive to be their best selves. So we just add aid where it's needed pretty much. Man, you, you make it sound so easy, man. I know someone's just, just thinking to themselves like, all right, it sounds nice, right? It sounds nice you know, helping people and, and doing this, but a lot of people are just trying to get to the point where they can themselves and be able to stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have somebody that you know, may be down bad and that are you know, looking to get their own financial stability? Well, I always say, firstly, it sounds easy, right? But the truth is, man, it comes down to some principles, you know, and it's simple. It's always simple, but it's not easy. So before you seek out to do anything, Let's talk about your belief in self to be able to actually do it and succeed. Um, most of the things that we take on as undertakings, you know, if you're operating from a space of lack, scarcity, imposter syndrome, especially when you've developed the skill and the talent and you feel like, man, am I good enough? Man, is the world gonna buy into this? Are they judging? It's very, you gotta build some, some ironclad will to see what you want through. And that comes back to understanding the mechanics of how does your mind really work when you're talking about creating your reality? How do your intentions that you set really work? You know, it goes beyond the power of intention and just having the, the will to want to do something and make it successful. But life will reward you for taking big risks. And at the same time, it's going to test you to see if you'll give up on that idea. You know, when I started with the credit thing, I would post somebody's results, for example, and post somebody doing successful in it. And I would get one or two likes maybe on that post. But in the DMs, it would be the close folks who knew and trusted me be like, hey, man, I need that help, you know, in that order. So when it came to those people reaching out, it takes something one out of you to step out of your box and ask for information you don't have. No one has it all figured out. You know, life is about relationships. God works through relationships. So literally everything you want to do, everything you want to achieve, there's somebody else to help you along the way. But it's not when you start this, the issue. It's when you have your first challenge to overcome. It's when your mother or your dad doesn't believe in what you're doing. It's when your homies will clown at you for wanting to take out ideas, succeed, or the one that I see the most, you know, you start something out and you wonder, man, no one's supporting me. Man, my friends aren't supporting me. You got to understand everything that's happening outside of life is simply reflecting your vibration of where you are at the moment. So the way you respond to that is by making sure you keep working on that self-belief. And no matter what happens, you make your mind firm and sure. I'm going to do this and I'm going to be successful at it. You know, am I willing to, because it's fine to be high vibrational when things are going right. 
That's not where you soar. How do you maintain this frequency and this vibration regardless of the ebbs and flows? Because those are going to come. And that's how the soul grows through life. That's how your will builds stronger. That's how your self-belief builds stronger. You know, so a lot of people talk about, well, you got to have discipline and do this at this set time. Well, my goal was always freedom. You know, so one, be clear about your goal because you can want to have a successful business and you can find yourself waking up one day to where you got all these obligations. And you don't have no time for yourself to where you have all these things that take up all your time. But are you really providing the quality of life that you want? Are you really providing the outcome that you want? So be very ironclad clear about what your goals are and just make sure to know don't be triggered by anything. Don't expect people to support you. Put more focus on having a product or service that actually helps people and be focused on your results. If you stay focused on those things that matter, the sky is the limit from that point on. And then if you have a rainy day or you got a bad season, you're not really worried about that. You're going to keep building from there. You know, before I dove deep into the credit thing, the one opportunity I was looking for when I graduated from college was to get an internship at the World Bank because, you know, African family. If you work at the World Bank, you've made it, right? That's, that's, that's why everybody goes for to look for that prestige. But I knew quickly when I asked myself, well, if I get this job, you know, who am I really working to serve? Mm -hmm. You know, is all of my intelligence and all of the schooling that I went through, does that only equate to me being in somebody's office eight, nine hours a day, getting GDP information about another country to then provide it to organizations who are going to probably go and take advantage of those countries? Like, who am I really serving here? You get what I'm saying? So the prestige is one thing to be in a nice suit, shirt and tie, which I've done for years and I love to be professional, et cetera. But at the end of the day, if that was the total of what my life force would be given into, that's not what I wanted. I would rather help my brother, my cousin, my, 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 my folks that I grew up with change mm -hmm. their lives in a practical manner every single day, because once their life is impacted, now they can share that information with everybody else. So to answer your question, number one, you got to believe in yourself more than anything that can bump you off of your line. If you start without that belief, you're working backwards, you know, because you will be tested. Man, 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 I love it. You're an example of that yourself. You know, one thing I love every time I interact with you, you got a good smile on your face. You, you know, you always just had this thing, man, watch this underdog come up, you know, because you know what you have is valuable. You're a master connector. You know how to connect people through different great networks. And I've seen you just pull resources to bring a lot of like minds and like organizations together. And what ends up is you impact people's lives that you're not even going to be able to see the fruits of how far that goes. You know, my, my younger brother still wears that black affluent shirt that you gave me from that organization. I went back home to the States for a week. I walked in the door, he had that on. So I wasn't even aware that he was thinking about anything like that, you know? So you just never know where those strides go. And that comes back to, again, everything you do in life, do it from a pure heart state. Don't, don't be tricked into doing things for a means to an end because that still comes from scarcity. You know, that still comes from a place that says, okay, well, I really need this output. So I'm willing to do all this only because I know I'll get some type of reward for it. Don't be reward driven, be purpose driven, you know, in everything that you do. That subtle mindset shift that is the difference between mm -hmm. you being trapped and you being freed and living the life that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a huge just a huge point um you know i talk I, I named the title of this uh live creating time freedom for you and your family um financial freedom has been somewhat of a buzzword lately right and i think a lot of people have kind of lost track of really what the goal is right it's like kind of like with crypto and i'm not knocking crypto i invest in crypto i support crypto but a lot of people just kind of rush into crypto trying to get the quick back. And they don't really understand that you need to understand what you're investing in before you actually invest into it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I think it's important that we think about um, time freedom because financial freedom is only, that's only surface level, right? Being able to live on your own terms doing what you want, not having to wake up at a certain time, 
put on the monkey suit, <laughs> as they say. You know, t talk about that portion and how you made that transition, if you could. Well, know your strengths and know your weaknesses. Some people need structure. Some mm -hmm. people need somebody to say, hey, I need you to be here at nine. You know, mm -hmm. otherwise they don't have the discipline to do it themselves. When you're really tested in life is when you actually have all of your time to decide what you want to do it. Because then you'll see if you have enough will to follow through with it. And that usually leads a person who's not ready for that to see, man, I got all this time, but I'm wasting my time doing other things. I really don't have the will. That's the first sign that you're actually working in a space that you don't love. That's why I say it's so important to go into something that you have a passion for, because then when the going gets tough, you're not going to feel like doing those things. You know, so financial freedom looks different for a lot of people. Some folks, and, and I will say, before I say this, I'll say, you know, don't shortchange yourself also, because one thing I hear a lot just through coaching people through the years is, man, all I need is just a house, a couple cars paid off and be able to provide a better lifestyle for my children. Well, if that's what you say, that's all you need. Your words are powerful, you know, and it's one thing to, to think when we talk about the power of words and the power of intention, that it's just, you know, just, just, just wishful thinking. But the truth is your words followed by your actions literally creates your reality. So stop mm. shortchanging yourself for what you can achieve. Dream big, but be practical in what your next steps are. So if you know you're a person who needs structure to be at a certain place, work on that discipline or perhaps shift to something that you know you would love to do for free and build a foundation using business credit and using the knowledge of credit around it so that you can support your goals and dreams. You know, like you said, time was one important thing. I was still challenged with that because we had three offices to where I would be in the office all day from nine to 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'd leave the office, go to the gym, which was right around the corner, come right back to the office. And I was doing that for so long i woke up one day and i was 30 and i was like bro you haven't even traveled like that like sure you now you can help support your family you can you know live a lifestyle that you want to but what are you doing with your time is this really it for you so i knew that i had a slight fear of stepping away from the business because i had built it to the point where i felt like okay only i can do this thing perfectly correct and lead the ship but what I needed to do was actually learn to train and coach others to be able to do exactly what I do. So now I can help build them while freeing myself up to do so. So again, go back to the drawing board with what's your goal. If you enjoy working, you enjoy interacting with people being there all day, that's fine. But just be clear on that. If you know you don't want to sit in a space all day, you want to travel, you want to be free, and you're good at managing people, focus on learning how to pull different resources and mobilize those people to then achieve the same goal. You know, there's a saying that goes, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want out of life. That proves true in business also. So, you know, again, it all came down to, mm. by the time I achieved the status to where I could get up and go as I please, have the whole business online. I was always against moving the business online because I thought the method we have is perfect. We're at an H&R block of credit. What credit company do you know where you can walk into office, you can see the person every day if you want to, they discuss your credit, they build it for you, then connect you with a realtor, help you buy your house and you can move forward. But then that became a trap after a while I had outgrown that. So then I had to develop the courage is, okay, how can I push myself to allow innovation to move into the online space? So in my mind, I was moving my business online so I can move to California and start writing because my true passion was always before writing. Service came natural. I love to help people with the knowledge that I have. But I was like, I want to get into more creative things. But little did I know, life was preparing me to do all of those things, to then be abroad now working in the healing sciences, which is something I've always been super passionate about in the esoteric world when it comes to plant medicines, you know, astrology, and all these other things that, that we, that we kind of work with in these modalities. So have that courage and it'll always be rewarded, you know, and go back to the, always go back to the drawing board because you're working something for a while. Then when you look up, it's like, sure, I'm making enough money. Cause you know, at one point we thought, Making $100,000 a year was good. If I make just that, I'm fine. 
But what I found myself doing, I'd be super passionate Monday through Thursday. Rest of the week, I really had no zeal to do it. Because why? There was no fulfillment in my work. I wasn't living in my purpose. And the, the, the double-edged sword that's happened with the shift that's happened in the world now, you know, a lot of people look at it for all the political things going on. I won't even speak on those things. But ultimately, it forced you to look around you and see, am I happy with what I've created for myself? Am I happy with my wife? Do I, you know, am I, I'm, I love my children dearly, but is this it for me? You get what I'm saying? Like, I love my job dearly, sure, but now the job says you can't go. Well, who am I outside of that space? You know, if I don't have all these things that I've accepted as my identity and trapped myself into, who am I beyond that? And how do I start to live a life to where I'm doing what's actually going to fulfill me throughout the day? Because I feel as people get older, you give up on that. You go from, you know, wanting to f find a way to make a living to then getting in survival mode. And then you just kind of shut down. And then you're looking online all day and then comparing yourself to other people, comparing yourself to others' accomplishments, which will never help the situation. You know, so ultimately, how do you cut out all those distractions and go back to self and be like, listen, what do you want? You know, do you, when I got up and realized, Jesus, I'm on the beach. Like every day I can chill, coast, I can go do yoga, I can go work out at the gym, I can take a couple business calls or just manage my team and I don't really have to do anything. That's when the questions really became like, well, okay, what does your fulfillment come from? Service. And because that's what was in my heart, naturally mm -hmm. life and God opened up a way to have a modem for that to happen. And then I just keep living my purpose through that. You know, so don't undermine how important it is to do something rooted in what you love because the truth is, when you're born, you already have everything in you that you're gonna need to live out your passion, your purpose, and your destiny. Life is merely just the process of that unfolding more and you learning your power more to allow yourself to step into that space. But it's gonna take jumping out of that comfort zone. And by jumping out of that comfort zone, it really means just to take a risk out on what you really wanna do. If you sit with it and don't believe it's really achievable, guess what? You breathe life into that. You know, so go back into small practice. And, and there's a small way you can exercise some of these things. You know, one weird thing I used to do, my friends would always look at me crazy about anywhere we drove. I'm like, man, I'm going to find a parking spot. I'm find a parking spot around this area and it's going to open up. <laughs> and then you see small things happening. That's how you start testing how the mechanics of the quantum field of energy that lives in your brain and in your creative force energy, how that really works out in life. And then apply that to everything else. You know, man. I want to do this project, but man, it's just me. I need like four other five, four or five like-minded people to kind of join this. You put that will and intention out there and let it be of pure heart and watch somebody show up to support that because life is responding to you 24 seven. So if you're sitting in that vibration of woe is me, feeling sorry for yourself, life's gonna be like, okay, well, this is what you want. Sure, stay there, but you can't be empowered and feel sorry for yourself at the same time. You got to choose one. Got to choose one. Come on with the word, Pat. Yo, you got the you got the healing on ten today, and I appreciate it. So many, so many gems, and I think what what stands out to me because I resonate with a lot of the principles you you we referenced. Um, you know, one thing is uh, just our environment is a reflection of our thought patterns and our belief systems. You know, so I always I always say, you know, look at life, right? Look at your bank, look at your friends' bank account and the lives that they live, right? That'll oftentimes let you know the type of thoughts that you've been thinking, whether they're positive or negative. And so, you know, I definitely believe that it starts with our thoughts. It starts with the things that we allow into our minds, our body, our spirits. As I know, you are 100% aware being a holistic practitioner and, and just focusing on wellness. Um, and that, that's really where I, I want to take this conversation as well, because I think there's a lot of, um, there's just a lot of confusion in the overall realm of, of healing. You know, we've been told a lot of things as far as what we should do. Um, in actuality, black people are you're, you're, we're unique, and we need a certain kind of 
of healing, whether that be our diet or our spiritual nature. Um, I would love for you to just share, you know, first how you got into the spiritual side and then how you've been able to build a community of people that are also doing the same things that you practice. Silently, you know that quiet and a force power that's in there. You always know it. It's alive in you throughout life. Sure, we live in an environment where other organizations, other institutions, they have a vested interest in your attention for a reason. So, you know, I'm not even a fan of looking at it like, oh man, you know, the system, they're poisoning the water and the chemtrails and they're feeding us commercials all day and the phone's buzzing and it wants you to hit the notifications for the dopamine fix. All of that stuff is fine. But if you don't get in the driver's seat of what's driving they want you to subscribe to their product or service or what they have to offer you more. So learn how to go within. And when I speak about this, if it's foreign to you, that's fine. But when you hear the word meditation, it's one of the most powerful, powerful things. Not just because, oh, it's cool to meditate and be at peace and oneness. That's not what it's about. It's that mostly you go through life associating yourself with your thoughts and your emotions. Your thoughts are just a tool that's a sponge to everything that it's fed and all of its conditioning and all of the programming. Your emotions, that's what gives power and life force energy. If I want a sandwich, I'm going to say it now. My emotions like, hmm, that's going to feel good. Then I go make one. Everything else in life works the exact same. But you're not those emotions either. That's what allows you to give life to things. Disassociating from the mind, disassociating from the emotions, and being silent enough to allow that voice inside to kind of come and give you information and to come and give you clarity. That's one of the most important practices because you go through all of life on a clock. You wake up, you brush your teeth, you finish brushing your teeth, you do whatever your morning activity is, you go to your job, you drive through traffic, you leave your job, you talk to your couple of friends, you jump in your social networks, you go home, you watch your programming, you go to sleep. You gotta know there's a lot more to life than that circle that you're running. Okay, now sure, we can create a mundane life around that and you can be content with that. But the truth is, you need to learn how to pause. Once a day, if at least even for 10 minutes, you need to learn how to pause. And meditation's not about sitting and stopping thinking. No, it's about just sitting in an observatory state. Mm -hmm. And whatever thoughts that come, sure, witness them move by. But then realize how your thoughts are triggers also. A thought comes up, it triggers an emotion, and it runs with that. So when you practice meditation often, you learn to just be in this realm state to where you don't associate with any of that. And you'll be surprised the amount of information and inflow of energy that starts coming up from your core. And just like you said, and what we consume also is more than what you watch or what you give your attention to. There's a brain in your gut. So the things you put into your system also ionize the body and gives you a lot of energy to do things or they take away from that and they make you lazy. You know, simple with food consumption. We're used to saying, you should eat till you're full. Well, when you're full, your body actually shuts down and you have no energy. Food should be nutritious and give you energy to do things. That doesn't say go be a vegan and go full blown at that, but be aware of what you're consuming. Is it, is it helping your vitality or is it taken away from that? So myself, I always followed and trusted that inner knowing to know that I was meant to help people get to a point where they realize they're in a power. And I've always demonstrated that through what I've done in life. So I've known that's kind of been in my mission. So by the time that plant medicine science is working with the medicine of what you call ayahuasca and bufo alvarius and combo and all these other things that we work with now, those things just fell in line when I was at a space where I was prepared for them. So you ever hear somebody say, man, don't be shameful or don't, don't feel any type of way about some of these blessings you say you don't have because you might not be prepared for them. Mm. If you're not prepared to run with an opportunity and it comes to you at the wrong time, you would fumble it anyway because you're not prepared. So a lot of times when we set out to do anything, we think, okay, I have to do these outside activities. And then when I attain those things, I'll be happy. It's the other way around. You got to get it right within yourself first.
And as soon as you're ready for it, those things will show up. You know, so one small practical thing for me was stopping eating red meat, stopping drinking alcohol, stopping smoking marijuana. That's mm -hmm. not to tell you go out there, stop eating red meat, stop drinking, stop smoking. But that's to tell you when you find things that have an addictive quality, they become escapism. They become a way for you to escape your mind every day because it gives you that peace of mind that you can't find in your regular state of being. So if any of those are clouding you, you can't get to that next level. I built a business that, was a, that allowed me to live how I wanted to live, but I knew, man, I still love to smoke weed and do my astrology, man. You know, so, but I know like I can't touch my full potential if I allow that. And with some of the modalities I work with now, marijuana just doesn't blend well with it. So when I had the intention to stop that, naturally I had other things to aid me. And then time soared. I can be anywhere now. I don't need any substance to come and affect my brain. I don't need anything to make me feel like I got to lose my mind or I got to be a little inebriated to have fun and be to a good state. So it takes a while to sometimes get there and it's a process, but it goes back to, again, the same thing. Deep down, whatever you want is what you're actually going to harness. You know, so if you're a person, you're like, man, I really just want to find a way to make some money. Like, I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck. I'm tired of my credit being so bad that I won't even look at it. You know, it's like, I know it's bad. I'm just going to work on my cash that I got. I'm not going to deal with it. Well, if you let it sit there, it's just going to sit and simmer. When all you got to do is find a person who has the information you're looking for. You can even do these things for free. You don't have to pay for the service. We have a great service to where we'll build somebody's credit for you. Sure, easy. But if you're a person, you're like, man, I don't even have the money to do these things. You can find that information out there for free and start applying it. But before you focus on what it's going to take to get to that level and do all that, be very intentional within yourself that this is what I want. And I'm making this decision and I'm choosing to make sure I'm operating from a place of abundance that one, my value is not based on my bank account. You know, when I had little money in the bank, just this business idea, knowing I can help people with this, I mm. knew I was going to make a million dollars. And mm. it wasn't about the million. I just knew like, okay, this is what I'm destined for. So regardless of whether things are good on the financial end right now or that, I'm going to be high vibrational through all of my dealings. I'm going to be smiling at the gym when I'm working out. When I deal with somebody, I'm going to, you know, be fully honest in everything I'm doing with mm. where I am in life, but at the same time, knowing that just because my account's low today, I'm not going to feel bad all of a sudden. You get what I'm saying? Just because my account's high this day, I'm going to feel sore through the roof. I learned to have an even kill balance through it all. So whether I have a grand opportunity come, it wouldn't make me jump for joy. You know, whether I had a bad patch to happen or uh, somebody that I've maybe taught the credit game and, you know, then they took it and made it their own and went, mm -hmm. I'm unaffected by anything. I don't control any of that. It's a concept I like to call point zero. I'm detached from all the outputs. I'm detached from all of the storylines, any of the belief systems about myself. I trust that if I fall into natural flow with life and just follow my heart into things I do, every single thing that I need will pop up. And it sounds like a crazy idea until you follow it. If you know nothing else has been working, try this out. Try to really be intentional. But what you'll notice when you first do that is the mind's going to come with the fear and the scarcity. And that self-talk is going to come like, man, who are you kidding? You can't do that. Man, who are you kidding? You don't, you're, not, you don't, you're not worthy of that. That's when you should really catch what's truly holding you back. It's that self-talk. It's that self-belief. It's that scarce mindset. It's that thing that you've allowed yourself to believe about yourself. So when you deal with that first, that opens paths. One of the powerful plant medicines we work with, what it helps you do is realign heart, mind, and soul. After you come out of that experience, people see expansion in their life in all areas, but then people also come out of it and break out of relationships and quit jobs and, and, and get away from things that were holding them back because a lot of people get into situations based on a need factor. Some people marry their partner literally because they're codependent on them. Some people won't leave the job literally because it provides the next paycheck. So how much is it worth to take your dreams and your goals away? 
If I give you $5,000 a month, was that enough for you to find comfort? You know, one of my good friends used to always say, man, give a man food, shelter, and entertainment, and he'll throw his dreams away. Ooh. He'll toss it in the pool for you. You know, because, and that doesn't make you or a bad person. That just goes back to, again, what's your goal? Mm. And then after you figure out what your goal is, what do you love doing that you would love to do every day and mm. create a life and um, create a way to get paid for it? Mm. Now, after that, talk to yourself about not how you're going to do it. Talk to yourself about affirming that and willing it into your life. And when you're having that conversation, notice the triggers that pop in your brain with the self-chatter or the self-doubt and all those things. That's the first devil you fight. The one that's up here telling you you can't do it. The one that triggers the emotions of, you know, anything. And then watch your triggers deeper. Watch all the low vibrational things to make sure they're not in your system. Don't be jealous. Don't look at what others have achieved and be envious. All of those things have you don't know what those people put. You don't know what work they put through. You don't know the sacrifices they've made. You know, so when you do all that, it's just a reflection of how you feel on yourself. You know, so it's, it's very important, again, to go within and ask yourself these real questions. You, you're a coach in your own right. How many people have you coached and you realize they've never even sat and asked themselves the question, of, man, what do you really want? Why? Because especially our folks, and this is where my heart cries out for our folks, Man, we go through a lot. You, you're born with, an, with a lot of inherent trauma that's programmed with you. That's not to say feel sorry for yourself and then go out and, you know, well, us black people, we just have a tough, we just, you're not going to get nowhere following that narrative. You're not going to get nowhere following that because that was a lie that was told to you also. Most mm. of the history they teach us tells us we're, we're people who are descendants of slaves and then raised from there. So the mind F is that that's where you, that's where your foundation was. That's where you're rooted from. That's not true. That's not who you are. You're the most, you're of, of the most powerful, most ancient race of people. And it's not a superior, inferior thing with other people, other races, but know the royalty that you come from. That's who you descend from. All of the modern history that's been taught to you, that's to keep you in this loop of feeling sorry for yourself to keep you in this loop of feeling like, oh, well, we're coming from a disenfranchised state, so we got to work 10 times harder, five times harder. Cut all that chatter out. Go back to just what you want to do. Beat your mind, and you can conquer the world. Don't worry about everything else outside of it. Man, you are preaching, man. I Like, giving me chills, man, literally. Just, just to hear the things that, like, Maybe I've known before, I've heard in the past, but just to hear them in a new way, it's always it's always refreshing. And, you know, I know that there's people watching you right now that are also getting some gems right now. And uh, you know, I really appreciate you 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 dropping those gems because um it's just something that we don't talk about enough, especially when you think about think about it from what you said, like I think of, we hear the term descendants of slaves often. Um, but <laughs> when you frame it like that, like we're descendants of kings and queens. Listen, that last <laughs> 600 years of history, that's a very small blimp in history, my guy. Mm. We've been all over the globe for centuries and have invented most of, if not most of all of the foundational things that literally operate the world at the moment. Why do you think there's such a vested interest in them keeping our people asleep and them using most of our power titan entrepreneurs for other things that aren't necessarily going to uplift the culture? But it's easy to get somebody to give themselves to a cause that's not for your benefit if they're pulling us out of a desperate state. That's why it's very dangerous to act from a place of desperation. You know, so you do have to be strong enough to beat the narrative not be in a place where you're feeling sorry for yourself, to be intelligent enough not to create a target on your back and operate to where you're just following your flow and you're not, not, not saying don't speak truth to power, but mm. be focused on where you can make an impact. Mm. My dad told me one of the just greatest things that I've kept with me my whole life, my, my dad always told me, he said, you know what? You have some special things within you to where you can help a lot of people. If you wanna make a large impact, 
for folks, but perhaps be short lived and, you know, be controversial and get out there, speak the truth to power, get into politics. If, but if you want to be successful and live a great life and help more people and have longevity, keep your mouth shut, stay under the radar, build a business where you can help individuals and make an impact in their lives. And that always stuck with me. So every time I had an opportunity to do something on some major stage, it's not that I wouldn't take it because I wouldn't want to speak to to people out there. But I figured, hmm, instead of go take this big title, I would rather help these 10 people switch their lives and change their lives for their family. Because that's that's what will give me fulfillment. And then also, I'm not in, um, even people of other descendants and races, man, everybody got their trauma. Everybody got their things that they're dealing with. Everybody, sure, we can make the debate of, oh, well, not as much as ours, and inherently these people are racist and all that. All oh, that's noise. When it comes to the spirit and the soul, we all of the same. When it comes to the blood that runs through your veins, we all of the same. Now, some of us may have more compassion than others. Some of us may have more, you know, you know other, other things that are within us. But at the end of the day, before you worry about making this large impact on the world and having those large dreams, you change yourself and that will change. Even, you'll see that everywhere. When I jumped into the credit thing, it came with no support, but I wasn't worried about support. I had tunnel vision. I knew I hooked this person up, it's gonna help and work for them. That makes me feel good. Move on to the next person, move on to the next person. When I jumped into the healing sciences, it triggered a lot of my business partners. Because they're like, man, you know, we're used to being able to call and talk to you 24-7 a day when we reach you. Now you're too good. You're out there on the beach and kicking your sand up and yada, yada, yada. They don't know what I'm doing here. You know, so I can't be triggered by that. I can't even be upset by that. You know, right. but at the same rate, I can't worry about what they're thinking. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we jump into this, which is completely foreign to a lot of our people. Be like, man, what y'all doing in the jungle with with all these folks in, you know, around the fire and all these other things. Sure, they don't know about it, but then naturally, I know I'm in my purpose. So the people that is called to come and have this type of healing, they show up. I don't gotta go find them. I don't look for credit clients. I don't market credit. I didn't build my business online. If you look at my max credit score page online, everything we built was brick and mortar based on relationships. So online is a great space. I even had an intention to move into and do that, but I always check myself when I'm doing something like, man, am I doing this to kind of get some exposure or is this really just what I feel like I should do from the heart? And I follow the path of the heart and it always, it always comes back and rewards me for that, you know, because that principle doesn't shift my vibration. You know, it doesn't change me from being a person to want to gain based on opportunity to really wanting to have the impact I have, you know, sure. I'm a business person. So I make sure to some level there's a fair in exchange. But if somebody approaches me and they don't have the method to pay for the services, I don't charge you for it. Let's keep it funky. You know, because if I help you, you change your situation. And I know you're, you literally don't have the ability to pay for it. I change your situation. I'm not worried about, oh, how's that going to come back to me? It's going to come back tenfold. Always has. Always has. Like what we did with the, with the kids at the school of Kip, you didn't get any monetary proceeds from that. And you brought all of us together. I didn't get any monetary proceeds for that, but I probably got 50 to 100 clients out of that one event. Not even thinking about it. Why? Because I was serving from a pure place. I was teaching things that I know. When it goes back to this idea of finding something you love, that already will have some evidence in your life. Everybody has a core gift, skill, or talent. And some of it doesn't have to be something super sophisticated. You can be good at making people laugh. You could be great at baking pies. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You can be great at making baby clothes. Whatever your forte is, what do you enjoy doing that you would do naturally? You can find other people to, to, that are in that market that will want to buy into that. But you got to first have the faith to follow up on that idea when you get that seed planted. And then other things will open up. Another analogy that I love, it's just been coming up this week. A wise man asked this horse, man, you're always taking me down this dark road. I can't see, so I know you can't see the end of the road. So how do you know where we're going? And the horse said, can you see your next step? Mm. We don't look down the road. Sure, it's great to have big ideas and goals and plan, but 
when you're coming from a place of knowing what your goal is, mm. the next step is what you are to complete. Mm. Execute that next step to your best ability and the road will keep showing itself. You know, like I commend people who come to these lives, et cetera, mm. because you have something that's driving you to get more information that's gonna push and motivate you. Now, when you get that new information, don't be worried about what I'm saying or what Xavier is saying or judging on this, that, and the third. Don't distract yourself with that. What information is here that I've aligned myself with that can help me? Take that, absorb it, throw the rest away. You might not resonate with 100% of what I say. You might think it's fairy tales, sure. What in it did you gain that can help you proceed forward in your goal? Take that nugget and blast through with it. And then lastly, and I'll say this a million times, when you have your goals and, and things that are near and dear to your heart that you want to execute. Stop elevating or deflating that measure based on what others' opinions are, okay? Because those are there as barriers and tests for you to go execute. Because you'll do that and you're like, oh man, my friends won't even such and such. If they believe in me, friends will show up for a football game. But if I ask somebody to support my business, they're not supposed to support your business. You're supposed to believe in your business. And if they can bump you off of believing in that idea, you're not as strong in that idea as you thought you were. So stop being triggered by all these outside things. Focus on what's important. What do I love? What brings me joy? Where can I serve? serve to me, service is everything. Those are the unseen things that people do behind closed doors. That's what really defines who you are, what you do behind closed doors. You know, because like I always taught my younger brothers, when you give, your hands open, open to receive. When you're, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're holding things in or you feel like you got a hoard to tighten, it's all a matter of energy. Always a matter of energy. Perspective, man. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, I think it was a few years ago I, when I was doing one of the last uh, Hustlepreneur events where I was telling my good friend Nas, who hosted the Hustlepreneur, and I was just like, man, I, I feel like I found the key to life. Even though like, I'm young, I'm broke, I feel like I found the key to life because I'm helping other people get the things that they need. And I told them, like, the key to the, the key to life is to put others before yourself and to make sure that, you know, you're giving a selfless place. And when you do that, like you said, your phones are open, you're ready to receive. Like, so many doors have opened because I was willing to share my platform or put somebody else on and live that life. So I'm a testament to what you're saying. It's truth, man, 100%. It is. Check your heart, man. Check your heart. Check your motives. Because those silent thoughts you think you have inside of you, they're not so silent. Those hold the strongest vibration in, in the frequency that you admit out into the world. So don't do that and beat yourself up about it. Mm -hmm. Forgive yourself. If you notice those thoughts come up and that you're holding yourself now hostage to all the bad mistakes that you've made through all the you know, situations and issues that you have that aren't necessarily forthcoming of your goal, that's fine. Acknowledge it, let it go. It don't serve you where you're going because what happens is your mind is constantly creating the reality to come. If you're stuck worried about the past, guess what story you're reenacting and recreating moving forward? If a person hurts you two, three years ago and you still hold on to that, sure, sometimes it's good flame for motivation to give you that free. But so long as you don't forgive that, you carry that with you. You, you don't allow your heart to, to be in an open space. You, you keep carrying that with you and it keeps brewing. And the body has great memory. You can forget all you want to in your conscious thought. The body remembers and stores everything energetically. And that's why it's important to do more studies in what you are capable of in this Merkaba vehicle here, because it is the most sophisticated technology that exists. You know, so it's here to not just empower and support you. It also follows your command. You know, so if you're in a state to where you're not in this empowered state, you think all these Marvel movies that they make, you think all of that's fiction? Think again, man. Think Ooh. again. Think again when everybody was joking on social media about, oh, well, there's a shift that happened in the cosmos and the earth is now elevating and you got superpowers. If you think all that's fiction, think again, man. Think again. <laughs> I'm telling you. Think again and revisit that and just go back to 
finding some time daily to be completely silent. Cut out the distractions. Cut out. You can live the rest of your life normal, that's fine. But every day make a practice to detach from all of these things because then it feeds you this programming to have you running this loop all day. To have you running this loop all day. And so long as you're running that loop, you're distracted. You know, you're just fully distracted. You're never, it's not about discipline. Like I told you, I wake up when I want to. I don't even plan most things. I only follow through on obligations that I have. But the rest, I'm not a person who says, do this at this time, do this at that time. That's not what discipline is about. It's about coming through on your word and, mm -hmm. and, and, and making sure you honor commitments that you make. But at the same time, you, the way your life is set for you, it doesn't have to look like anybody else's. And that's completely fine, you know? And then thirdly, and this is something on the side that's very important I got to put in there, man, start eating to live. Start eating foods that are actually going to feed your brain and your neuroplasticity. Start eating things that are going to give you energy. All of the food that has no nutrients, that's why when you eat, you're still hungry. Because a lot of the food that we're consuming, it's convenient. Sure, you can leave the house, you can walk around the corner, go to Popeye's. But I promise you, it doesn't have the nutrition you need. The oil will just fester in your system. And that's, a lot of that's not meat that you're eating. Sure, your body is sophisticated. It will go through and process it. But this is life. The air you breathe, the prana, is life. You get what I'm saying? Plants are life. Fruits are life. You know, so make sure you feed yourself the right things to give you energy throughout the day. Stop shutting your body down just to find another way to kind of escape. That's the first important thing. And that takes a little bit of discipline and restraint to do. It's very important. You literally are what you eat. You know, literally. Shoot, man. My, my girlfriend's a vegan, man. She, she reminds me of that and her subtle ways, but I'm actually grateful. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful because it is making me more health conscious. And I do realize how easy it is just to slip it. You know what I mean? Especially if you're in the hood or somewhere like that. So there's not as many health options. I won't say that. At not. all, man. It's tough. It is. Tough. It is. So do you have any... Because um, one, one of the things I, I do want to leave the people with is some resources where they can begin to dive deep and do their own research. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any books or podcasts or anything that you've uh, read or listened to that could potentially help uh, our audience? Man, something that's on a basic fundamental level. It's a small book. It's like a 70, 80 page manuscript. And it's called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And the only reason I recommend this is because it goes back to just making you more aware of how important it is to start reprogramming your thought pattern and the way you think about things. Because there are tons of books that can teach you a lot of education on many different topics. But at the end of the day, it's all about how you shape your mindset and in, in what you choose to create on a daily basis. You know, thirdly, it's very important that you learn credit and business credit knowledge. And the reason I say this is because it allows you to get everything way cheaper than you would if you would go finance anything. And then thirdly, when you do find that thing you love, you can create a foundation around it. And it's very simple. I can give it to you in 10, 15 seconds, two years. If you have a business and you're operating in two years, you need to build at least seven to nine accounts that you use specifically under 20 to 30% that you pay in full when you open those, pay in full and pay early after those two years. And during that two years, of course, open a business bank account, keep money in there, keep the transactions going outward to a minimum or none. Don't have like discretionary spending on those. Show that the account, show that the account is stable and that you're feeding money into it. When you show that record of you using those accounts specifically, not only will those accounts start to grow, but then later on when you go to try to finance something, you can use the credit as leverage to then get financing. I'm not even a big, a big um, fan of getting outside fan financing to start a business. I like cash flow methods. I like things that are going to create cash flow for yourselves because then you can take risks that are calculated based on your own. But if you have a big idea and you know you already have a vehicle to recoup that money, sure, go out there and get funding and put that funding towards what you want. But it's very dangerous to go out and get a whole bunch of funding without an idea already in place of how you're going to make that income back and pay that back. Because then it's not worth it. Then you'll get that boatload of funds. And instead of 
taking it for the idea, you'll use that to pay your bills and other things and it'll just be working backwards and get you in the cycle. You don't necessarily wanna do that. Second, your personal credit. Clean your credit if you can. Establish three to four credit cards. Use them consistently under 30% themselves so the cards will start to grow and show that record of paying on time and build that over a year or two and literally build your credit. Once your personal credit score gets above a 680, you can start building credit based on your business without having to use yourself as a personal guarantor, which is the main benefit of having business credit. So if something goes wrong with the business, they can't come back and take your house or your car, claim your assets or anything of that nature. So learn about credit, get the information out there, implicate those, the time has to pass anyway. So implement those small things and use the time and use it as a game to get yourself right. You know, but thirdly also, that daily meditation I talk about, if it's just 10 minutes a day, do it. If you're not a person who loves to, because you got to move the energy in your body. So if you're not a person who loves to work out and all these things, fine. Stretch for 10 minutes a day. Stretch for 10 minutes a day, meditate for 10 minutes a day, and learn to track your self-talk. If you do those three things, it will literally start to transform, regardless of where you're starting at. If you're a person who's a whiz and life is going well for you, you make good income, all of those things can still benefit you. Track that self-talk. Learn how to talk. Learn how you talk to yourself. And then start to undo that. And then don't allow it to trigger you or get down on yourself. Just observe it and start to put placebos in place. So when you have this thought that's speaking against yourself, you catch yourself and you put something else in there. Because words are important. They carry vibration. It's called a spell. We spell words for a reason. It gives power to the things in your life. And then lastly like minds i'm sure you love your friends and your family but small talk and gossip talk and you know all of these things that are not really going to be conducive to where you're trying to go in your life cut that stuff out no judgment towards those people or any of those outlets it comes from you just got to be discerning with your focus you know and focus doesn't mean be super tight and this because ultimately you want to get to a place where you're having fun every single minute of your life mm. that's the goal you weren't you didn't come here to work to make a living to stress that's not it stress is the number one killer most diseases come from dis-ease some form of food or energy that is what literally starts getting the body and the mind to start deteriorating so do things that are going to feed you life, you know, and don't get on your high horse. Oh, well, I'm living high vibrational. I can't be around y'all because y'all low vibration. No, it's not about judgments. It's not about, you know, what other people are. You want to change other people? Don't preach to them. Change yourself and watch what happens. Change yourself. That will do all the work for you. Ooh. Yo, drops the mic, man. Yo, Mr. Mo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, um, man, where can people go? Because I just feel like I'm personally, I'm going to listen to this live stream again, right? Because there's just so many gems. But let's say someone may have a question about some of the things you're talking about today. Where can people reach you online? And you know, what are your social? Man, message me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm family to us all. So I'm... X know me, I'm easy going. Message me if you got any random question, if you just want to chat, whether it's information about like finances, mindset, whether it's information about the holistic sciences we're doing. I just put my IG under there, it's underscore um, Mandinka underscore King. Um, if you have any questions about credit, I'll put the credit page on here also. Um, it's Max Credit Score. And I'll also put my email. If you just want to send me a business email and you have a random question where you need advice on something for your business, I'll shoot you an email back within 72 hours or so. And we'll just make sure we build. And again, that's what it's about, right? Build yourself and naturally it'll help build everybody else around you. No other person has anything different than you do when it comes to what you can create for your life. A lot of, some people just have more self-love to prioritize where they want their life to go and more willing to sit in that driver's seat and take it there. And you can do the same. And even better if you can do it from a place of compassion that's gonna uplift others and that's not gonna you know, put you in a situation to where you're gonna win at the downfall of other people. You know, Think expansion, think of things. If 
you can always get more done by helping community than you can being focused on yourself. So a lot of times, the blessing that you're looking for is in sowing seeds in other people. And that's something we can all practice that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I appreciate you having me, my brother. It's been it's been a while since we spoke. So when you reached out, I was like, definitely, let me tap in with my guy. Because I'll, I'll be watching even the things we talked about, man, I, I remember just through the years, just I'll tap in your, your page and or your story and I'll watch you in your morning meditation, enjoying your good, your good music and thoughts. I was like, look at this guy creating. I love it. I love to see it, bro. Hey, man, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely. Um, and like I said, I Extremely ecstatic to be reconnected with you as well. Um, I'm thinking about just contacting you on some or one on one stuff because we share a lot of decisions and I would talk more about you. Uh, and uh, I feel like we're getting some feedback. Um, thank you, a Thousand, for taking the time to speak to our audience. Um, I hope to have you back again soon. And uh, maybe I can. You abroad that you're in Mexico. Yeah, I'm in Tulum, Mexico. I've been here about two years. I'm gonna I'm have to catch up with you on that, man. For real, bro. That's amazing. Bless my brother. Thank you again for having me. Peace and love to all of you out there. Don't be a stranger. Link up with family. And again, keep vibrating. And then the mirrors of where you are will start showing up in your life, man. Beautiful, beautiful. Have a blessed night, man. You too, my brother. Peace. All right. Peace.